Hey, what's going on? In this video, I'm going to be forging out a cleaver from ADCRV2 steel. This particular customer has ordered several knives from me, and you can see that he has quite a few requirements listed out. Some people order knives and say, I like your style of knives, just make me a cool 8-inch chef knife. Other people have something very specific in mind, and frankly, I like making knives for both. It just comes with the territory of making custom knives. In order to get the height I need in this blade, I'll need to forge weld some ADCR V2 flat bar together for some thicker starting stock. I start by grinding the surfaces clean and removing all of the mill scale. I'll clean off all the surfaces with acetone and then blow off any lint and debris with the air compressor. I'll clamp it all up and weld the corners and sides and then I'll attach a piece of rebar to give me something to hold onto with the tongs. Before going into the forge, I like to soak my billets in WD-40. This generally prevents me from needing to use any flux when forge welding, but you'll see a little later that I ended up using some flux on this billet anyway. Occasionally it's necessary, but I try to keep flux out of my forge whenever possible because it eats away at the refractory cement liner. <laughs> Pay attention to this heat and how quick and fluid I am with the press here. In the next couple of heats, I try to use a foot treadle for the first time, and it's kind of funny. I am definitely not as coordinated with my foot as I am with my hand. That's going to take some getting used to. If anyone's got any tips for switching to a foot treadle, I would love to hear them in the comments. After about four heats, I like to grind off the welds on the corners and sides and also go over all of the seams to make sure the forge welds all look good. I was a little worried about one side of the billet. I couldn't see any delaminations, but I could see the seams where the bars were joined, so I decided to add some flux and give it a couple more forge welding heats. While that billet was soaking in the forge, I decided to frost a birthday cake that I baked for my wife. And back to the billet. You can probably tell that I abandoned the foot treadle and went back to using the hand lever on the press. Here's a look at the end of the billet and you can see that all the welds look good and it looks like one solid piece of steel. We'll get it back in the forge and turn it into a knife. I was getting low on propane and had to switch to this smaller tank and I needed to put a heater on it to keep it from freezing. I get asked quite a bit how I make and use these kiss blocks on my press. In general, I make posts for the smallest size I'll need and then I add 16th of an inch or 8th of an inch shims to get the thickness that I need. Then I use a little dab of super glue to keep the shims in place while I'm forging. I tried to knock down any high points with the hammer here, especially around the perimeter of the billet where it's hard to get with the fullering dies on the press. I'm ready to start shaping the handle, so I'll cut the rebar end off and use the press to isolate the handle material. I got way too aggressive here with the press, and I ended up having to grind out a bunch of cold shuts in the handle. It all worked out in the end, but I could have done this a lot differently. Once I ground out all the cold shuts, I smoothed things out on the anvil and started to shape the handle.
I wanted to add a bit of a flare to the butt of the handle and also to the tip of the blade and I tried doing most of it on the anvil. Obviously the handle starts to bend over but that's a pretty easy fix. It would have worked better though to work each area separately in a vise instead. I ended up doing some of that a little later anyway. Now I'm starting to thin out the blade a bit more and get to the final height. He wanted a slight taper from the spine to the beginning of the bevels. I got the blade rough forged to shape and I'll trace out a profile to refine the shape on the grinder. You can see the blade's a bit long right now too, so I'll trim off about an inch or so. I still wanted a little more flare in the tip of the blade, but I didn't want to disrupt the rest of the profile, so I put it in a vise and hammered on the tip. This worked really well and also works a lot better than what I did on the anvil earlier. If you got a post vise or a leg vise, that's the way to go. I'm probably going to break this bench vise eventually if I keep hammering on it like this. Now we'll get on to one of the tricky parts of this knife, a tapered tang. A tapered tang isn't too difficult in general, but with a brute to forge finish, it adds a little complexity. You have to get the taper pretty close to perfect with the hammer because you can't grind the transition area at the end of the scales. I just went slow and took my time here and actually ended up with a pretty nice taper in the end. You can see that nice flare at the tip now from upsetting the steel in the vise. I'm close to done forging now, so I'll make sure everything is nice and straight in the vise. I left the tang out of the vise since it's tapered so that I could push on it and keep it centered as the blade cools. Now that I'm done forging, I'll stamp the blade with my maker's mark and then I'll anneal the steel by letting it cool slowly overnight in the forge. You can see I modified the profile a bit from the drawing, mostly just the tip. I actually made the drawing a little too long, so I trimmed down the blade to give me a 7.5 inch edge. I also changed the shape a little, just because I like the look of this better. I'm marking out some guidelines here on the tang so I can make sure it's perfectly centered relative to the blade. I just used some Sharpie along with a quarter inch drill bit, which is roughly the thickness of the spine of the knife. I added this guard so that I made sure my grinding didn't come anywhere close to the ricasso area that won't be covered up by the scales. I marked and punched holes for the handle pins. Here's a look at my setup for drilling holes in a tapered tang. I use a base piece of wood and a clamp, and then I shim the end of the tang to make sure the knife is sitting perfectly parallel to the ground. I add a couple spring clamps and hope for the best. I added some holes for weight reduction and to allow the epoxy to bond through from one scale to the other. I chamfered all the holes to remove any sharp edges that can be a stress riser and cause cracks during the quench. I drilled out a hole on the tip for hanging the knife. I like to start with a quarter inch hole and then use a step bit to gradually widen the hole on both sides until it's the right size. I think this bit leaves a nicer round over on the edges rather than using a chamfer bit. I'm going to run three normalization cycles at 1650, 1500, and 1400 degrees Fahrenheit, and then I'll quench at 1525 in Parks AAA that was heated to around 120 degrees Fahrenheit.
I tempered the blade at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for two two-hour cycles. I took the edges of the blade up to 220 grit and then hit them with a very fine surface conditioning belt loaded with black polishing compound. I'm doing a convex bevel grind on this knife to make for a meatier and more durable edge. A friend of mine got me that work apron for my birthday recently. Man, it's been great. I don't burn holes in all my shirts now. After I grind the bevels to 120 grit, I like to test the hardness of the edge. This blade skates a 55 Rockwell file and just barely skates a 60 Rockwell file. The 65 file easily digs in, so I would guess this blade is around 60 to 61 Rockwell. I took the bevels up to 220 grit and then hit them with a very fine surface conditioning belt loaded with black rouge. Here's a look at the finished blade and it's ready for some handle scales. It's going to get a set of desert ironwood scales with no liners. Since it's a tapered tang, I shim the scale under the tang before drilling the handle pin holes. You've got to do this one scale at a time and you pretty much have to be perfect here or else your pins won't fit through both scales when you attach them to the handle. In order to shape and finish the front section of the scales, I added double the amount of shims to account for both sides of the taper. I took the fronts up to 400 grit and then polished them on a buffing wheel with pink rouge. I did a little test fit and everything went together nicely so we'll get it glued up. I cleaned all the surfaces with acetone and then mixed up some Total Boat Medium Epoxy. I added some black color pigment to help conceal any imperfections in the fit. I let that cure overnight and now we'll get to shaping the handle. The grain in these scales works really nicely with the contours of the blade profile. I do all the rough shaping on the 2x72 and take everything up to 220 grit. Once I move over to hand sanding, I go back down to 120 grit and progress up to 400 grit. Here's a look after sanding and we'll give the handle its first coat of oil. I use Odie's oil and I apply three coats with at least 12 hours of cure time between coats.
I'm using these angle guides by Wedgeck, and one of the nice things when you buy the multi-angle pack is that it comes with a piece that allows you to combine angles. Here I've got a 20 degree angle guide paired with an 11 degree angle guide to give me a 31 degree sharpening angle. That might sound like a really big angle, but for a cleaver, I think that's actually a really good spot to be. The convex grind along with the 30 degree sharpening angle should make for a really durable edge. I progressed through a 300, 1200, and 3000 grit diamond stone and then strapped the blade on a double sided leather strap loaded with 5 micron and 3.5 micron diamond paste. I'm not really sure what I'm testing here, but it was satisfying to chop through this 550 cord, and we'll do a paper towel roll for good measure. I'll apply a food safe blade wax and melt it with a heat gun to make sure it seeps into all of the crevices and texture of the Brute de Forge finish. Here's some finished shots. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching.